Hi everyone, Phil from tech for Techs. Today we're going to be looking at the Gelid Phantom Black CPU Cooler. It says it's the ultimate CPU cooler, well we're going to find out if it actually is. It does work with all your latest CPUs, so there shouldn't be any problems there, even the 1200 series socket. So it should just be basically connect up and away you go. But we're going to see if it does actually hold up to the ultimate name on there. Uh, we do have links in the description below. If you click on that link it will show you the cheapest price available in your country. Okay, so we've got the GLID Solutions Phantom Black Ultimate CPU Cooler for Intel and AMD CPU with TDP over 200 watts. Uh, it's new, compatible to Intel Socket 1200, so that supports your latest sockets. It supports all the way back to 775, all the way up obviously to what we just said, the 1200 socket, including the 1211s, 1156s and all those, 11366s. AMD goes from AMD2, the Plus, AMD3 and the Plus, AM4, a, uh, sorry, FM1 and FM2, so again it should work with pretty much everything on the market, with the exception of stuff like your thread rippers and stuff like that. You can see the cooler there. Have a look at the side, gives you some information, I'm not going to read all that out, um, but gives you a, a rough idea of what CPUs it'll work on. Tells you a bit more information on the back there, it tells you things like it's got uh, uh, seven mix size nickel plated heat pipes, advanced twin tower heat sink, two smart PWM fans, which means it adjusts the fan speed depending on the temperature of the CPU. Triple fan option, so you can add a third fan if you wish. Enhanced mountain kit, TDP of over 200 watts, a high class black nickel plating, and then a five year limited warranty, which five year warranty is pretty good. Um, and by the looks of it, the fans are traditional fans, so you'd be able to swap them out. Uh, gives you a bit more information on here, all the sizes and different dimensions and all this, that and the other, but the basics of the dimensions, it's 120 length, 120 width, 25 high, um, that is the dimension of the fan, obviously the dimension of the heat sink is 118 length, 126 width and 160 high, so that's pretty good. And you've also got your warranty information there as well. And the weight is 1.02 kilo by the looks of it. Uh, so that's 1,020 grams. Uh, at the top tells you some of the information I've already told you already. So that's pretty much it. So let's open it up and see what we've got. And if it is as ultimate CPU cooler uh, as it says it is. Okay, so this is what you've got in your box, basically. So you've got several different things. So let's start off with the manuals. You've got two manuals uh, in there. So I'm guessing that's installation instructions for maybe AMD. And hopefully the other one is for Intel. Yeah, for Intel. So you've got different installation instructions for each. So We'll just ignore those for now. Also in here you have a bag with your back plates and individual bags for AMD, Intel and so forth. It even comes with a bag with thermal paste and so forth in it. Basically all the fittings you'll need to attach that to your motherboard as it will need a brace on the bottom of your socket. Uh, I would have thought for AMD and Intel. No, just for Intel it needs a bracket on the bottom. So, by the looks of it, from what I can see from the instructions at least. Right, let's get more into depth. Um, you've got four fittings here. That's basically to attach the fans to here. We'll show you how that goes in a few minutes. Both of these fans, which are black and white, so it's not totally black, uh, as the name probably implies. Um, You've got cables on them which look like the 30 centimeters. Let me just double check that. No, 40 centimeters on those. Now, 50 centimeter cables on those, so you've got 500 mil cables, that's long enough. Again, both fans have got the same, they've both got the PWM fan 
connect to there so you can plug those either two into your motherboard if you wanted to or there is a Y cable which you can combine both of the cables into one header and plug that into your motherboard saving your fan sockets I suggest you do it that way because that way um, the correct sensor will be obviously controlling both fans at the same time on the board so basically to to have a look at closer at the fan you can see it's basically a white casing with four rubber areas on the edge same on the reverse that's for anti-vibration and so forth which is good nine blades on the fan the fan itself is black it's got some specifications on the back, DC 12 volts, 0.25 amps and 1600 RPM. So it gives you a rough idea how fast that fan is going to spin. Both fans are identical, yeah, which I would have thought in this. And then you come down to the actual heat sink. I can see there's one bent in there slightly, it's not going to affect it too much, I think that's popped back in place now. So you can see the two tower design, so you'd have one fan basically there, one in the middle, and you can optionally add a third fan there if you wanted, bear in mind there isn't a cable for combining all um, three fans, you'd have to add that as an extra or get a splitter cable, uh, that's obviously up to you. Um, but it's black, apparently it's all nickel, so plating on there, um, so it does give it a bit of a sheen and shine look to it. There's no branding on the cross the top or anything like that. You can see the heat pipe, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't count those because it basically loops around, the heat pipe does all the way around, goes through the base. So it's nice to see it goes through the base rather than the heat pipes actually being touching the base, which some prefer one way, some prefer the others. But that base is nickel as well, so it's completely nickel, so it's quite shiny. If you can get it on the right light, it gives you a rough idea. Um, so that's obviously where your thermal paste will go, but the base the heat pipe goes all the way through the base and round the other side, so there's seven of those all together. Um, gives you a rough idea, that's part of your mounting, um, you will need that middle fan out to mount it, which is usually the case with these towers, so you take that out, screw those in to whatever uh, board you're connecting it to, or mounting system, which obviously they provide, well not the motherboard, but to, you know what I mean, but that gives you a rough idea what it looks like to attach the fans, it's usually pretty straightforward. They're only giving you um, mounting for two, not three, okay? So you'd have to somehow get hold of the mounting. So from what I can see, obviously position your cable wherever's going to be easiest. Either that's going to go through the top one and down. Into that, yeah. So that connects like that. Then you get the next one. And basically do the same thing again. So one in there, one in there, and then on the side you hook it in that hole or trench there and then that is on. Okay? And then you've got your middle one which does sit in there. Yeah, there's no nothing there actually to uh, grip it in by the looks of it, so you are going to have to use uh, these clips, unfortunately, so depending on how you want to do it. So let's get it in the right way around. Uh, straight down. One clip in. There. Does get a little bit fiddly when you're doing these. Because the fans are always catching against the fins. Let's do it that way. So one in there. One in there. 
add it in a bit better and then hook it over the trench there and then do the same on the other side and then your two fans are in place but as I said there isn't the fittings for a third fan so you'd have to somehow source some of these uh, one way or another um, or find a unique way of attaching it to the heatsink but that's basically what it'll look like when it's all set up but we'll plug this in and find out how good it actually is Okay, down to testing. In basics, all testing is done on the same machine, with the same version of Windows, with the same version of programs. We disable internet access, so no programs, updates or anything can be installed or updates what can affect any of the results. All background tasks which are non-essential get disabled, so again, they will not affect the testing. The testing room has air conditioning slash heaters built in to keep the temperature at 18.5 degrees Celsius. Also, decibel levels are at a steady 45.6 decibels. When testing things like fans, we set the speeds at 50% and 100% and not auto, because obviously if you've got something set at auto, it will adjust the fan speed to up and down to adjust the temperature to the optimal temperature, so it can affect results. So we set the fan speeds at set uh, speeds like 50% and 100%. All testing is done on a 10700K i7 processor, 16 gig of RAM, as well as a FiCuda SSD and the same motherboard and all the other components are the same for every single test. Full specifications are in the description. Okay, so down to testing. First of all, we test the idle temperature in Celsius at 50% fan speed. That means when Windows is sitting idle, as in there's nothing running on the machine, no background programs or anything like that, and the fan is running at 50% speed, we get the average temperature after 30 minutes. And as you can see here, the basically they all come within 1 or 2 degrees of each other. Uh, the Phantom Black comes in at 20 degrees Celsius. On this next test, we check to see the load temperature with the fan running at 50% speed. Again, that means the fan is running at 50% of its speed. Full load means that the processor is working flat out, so all eight cores are working at 100% for 30 minutes, and we get the average temperature. And as you can see here, the Phantom Black actually comes joint first place with the Arctic Freezer 50, which is actually pretty good going, considering it is a cheaper cooler. In this test, we basically do exactly the same thing again, but this time the fan is running full whack at 100%, so they're going as fast as possible. As you can see here, the Phantom Black is only one degree behind the Freezer 34 eSports Duo and actually outperforms the Arctic Freezer 50, which is a more expensive cooler. So overall, it is performing extremely well considering its price range, so that is good to know. On the next test, we basically do the same again, but this time the processor is overclocked to 5.1 GHz, which basically causes it to create more heat. And as you can see here, the Phantom Black again comes in at the second place, just behind the Arctic Esports Duo uh, with 71 degrees. But again, it beats out the Freezer 50, the Tranquilo 4, and the Intel Stock Cooler just can't keep up at this point. On the next test, we check on the actual sound it produces, so what we call decibel levels. In the first test, we run it at 50%, so that's the fans at 50% speed to see how loud they are. And as you can see here, they're all roughly the same within two, maybe three degrees, but the Phantom Black is slightly more noisier than the others, and that's mainly because it's got two fans um, running at the same time rather than one like most of the others, with the exception of the eSports Duo and the Freezer 50. On to the next test, it's basically the same thing again, but this time we run the fan speed at 100%. So the fan is running flat out, and this is the decibel levels then. Again, they're all very similar to each other. The Phantom Black comes at 60 decibels, which is sort of middle of the field-ish um, compared to some of the others. But uh, the things like the Tranquilo 4 it does run at 57 decibels, but again, that's only got one fan in comparison to the two fans of the Phantom Black, which... The Phantom Black does outperform it by miles. 
So in conclusion, at the time of filming, the Phantom Black is roughly £42 on Amazon. So that's an actually quite a pretty attractive price for a dual tower dual fan cooler. In all reality, it's designed very similar to, the, for example, the Arctic Freezer 50, just that the Arctic Freezer 50 has got RGB lighting on it and loads of plastic slapped over it, and it cools just as good as that does, which, for the price, again, is probably around about £20 cheaper. The RAM clearance on there, not the best, but the good thing about it, because of the way the fans are, you can slightly move the fan up slightly to give you more clearance underneath, where again, for example, the Arctic Freezer 50, you cannot do, so you have to have low profile memory, where this, if you've got big RGB memory, you can just position the fan slightly higher up and it'll still let you use it without any problems. Only other real issue came across was the instructions. They were a little bit faded on the paper as if they'd run out of ink or running out of ink when they printed them out. But again, you can get most of this information on their website with the full instructions on there, which is probably a lot clearer to read because it, obviously you can zoom in and enlarge it so you can see what you're doing. But really putting it together was quite easy to do. So altogether, you've got a very high performing, not bad in the noise department as well, dual tower, dual fan cooler. And again, for just over £40, that's pretty good going, to be honest with you. It does outperform others of a higher price range on the market. So I have no problem highly recommending this product.